18 Stafford Terrace has been part of my family's life for over 100 years, since she was bought by my great-grandparents, Lindley and Marion Sanborn, in 1875. The house is filled with memories. I hope you enjoy your visit. My darling Marion, I gather that your papa has not refused us to be married in October. It has made me so happy. I can't bear to be alone so far from you. Edward Lindley Sanborn, an up-and-coming cartoonist and illustrator, known always as Lindley, married Marion Herapath on the 20th of October, 1874. The following year, they bought this house for £2,000 and never left it. The location of Stafford Terrace in the newly fashionable suburb of Kensington had particular attractions for the Sanborns. Marion's parents lived only five minutes away, and nearby a number of successful artists were building large studio houses. Lindley couldn't afford to build on this scale, so he set about creating his own version of an artist's house. Redecorating, improving and adding objects to the interiors of number 18 became a lifelong passion for Lindley. Return to Stafford Terrace. Workmen all over the house. New stained glass window and two stained glass panels on staircase. The interiors at number 18 certainly helped to establish Sanborn's artistic reputation. But Stafford Terrace wasn't just a family home. It also provided him with a workspace. I was born in 1844, the only child of an English middle-class family. My parents, though gratified at an early taste for drawing, did not take any particular steps to further it. I have as a friend, Mr. Alfred Reed. He once urged his father to show Mr. Lemon, then editor of Punch, some of my drawings. Mr. Lemon saw promise in them, I suppose, with the result that my first sketch appeared in Punch in April 1867. This was the start of a flourishing career with the popular satirical publication. The subject for his cartoon was decided at the weekly Punch dinner and delivering his drawing on time was a constant pressure for Linley. But from the mid-1880s, he discovered something that was to help him for the rest of his career. My camera is my pencil, and my photographs are my notes. I never know what my subject may be, so I have to provide myself with every imaginable model, from a weasel to a Welshman. Lindley began to use photography to speed up his creative process. Everyone was persuaded to pose for him in the backyard. Friends, servants, models and family using a variety of costumes and props. Photography played a significant part in furthering his career. In 1901, Lindley was appointed to the prestigious position of first cartoonist at Punch. He catalogued over 20,000 images during his lifetime. Photography also became a private passion. He was a keen member of the camera club, where a more artistic type of photograph might be taken. The income from Punch was not in itself enough to support his ambitious lifestyle. Lindley took on many freelance commissions, including illustrating children's books, arguably producing some of his finest work. His drawings for The Water Babies and Hans Christian Andersen show what a talented artist he was. Throughout the 1880s and 90s, life was hectic for the Sanborns. There were numerous dinner invitations, social outings, family gatherings. Life seemed to be one long engagement. Sanborn was very sociable, making many friends with fellow artists, writers, actors and businessmen at his several clubs. At 10.30, Wilde called again and looked at 130 drawings. 
After Act Two, Marion and myself to the Haymarket Theatre had a large royal box. Play delightfully played. The actress Nina Boussicourt looking older. Wishing you a happy new year. I remain very truly yours, Lewis Carroll. June the 17th, 1889. Eiffel Tower, amazing. We'd lunched on the premier etage. Shall try and get your gloves tomorrow. Linley and Marion had two children, Maud and Maudley, who was always known as Roy. My own darling mother, I hope you will like the snowflakes I'm sending you. I draw all day now. It is so nice, I love it more than ever. My daughter, I am proud to say, has shown an originality of touch which I consider quite remarkable in a girl of 17. Although Maud was a published artist, finding her a suitable husband was a priority for the Sanborns. The marriage of Miss Sanborn attracted a great number of friends yesterday afternoon. The bridegroom is Mr. Leonard Charles Rudolph Messel, son of the prosperous stockbroker Ludwig Messel, and a man with definite prospects. Lenny and Maud had three children, Linley, Anne and Oliver. By contrast, Roy's childhood and early adulthood did not run as smoothly as his sister's. How I wish Roy would try to do better at Eton for Linley's sake. Wish Roy were more earnest and serious generally. With a little strategic help, Roy did manage to get into Oxford University, but even he wasn't too optimistic about his academic future. I am doing a good deal of work, but I fear it is fearfully hard and dreadfully long. Very few think it would be possible for me to get a degree next June. Unfortunately, Roy was easily distracted by his incorrigible interest in the actresses of the time. I'm sitting here simply surrounded by photos. My dear Roy, with love, Adna. To dear Samborn. With kindest thoughts, Elsie. Roy returned to number 18 without gaining a degree and embarked on a career in the city. He eventually ran his own company, Samborn & Co. But perhaps Roy never found his real passion in life. Punch is a national institution and the death of Mr. Lindley Samborn, which we regret to announce this morning, is a national misfortune. Lindley Sanborn died on August the 4th, 1910, aged 66. Marion lived for a further four years without her beloved husband, and when she died, the ownership of number 18 passed to their son Roy, who remained at Stafford Terrace. With the encouragement of his sister Maud, he lovingly preserved the home their parents had created. Pray God I may keep my beautiful home in its original state as long as I may live, and may it be cared for after I am gone. Roy never married, and after his death in 1946, the house was left to his sister Maud, and after she died, its fate looked uncertain. But there was to be a final family custodian for number 18. It was Anne, Lindley's granddaughter, who with the help of her second husband, the Earl of Ross, breathed life into the house again. Gradually, the magic of the house grew on me, and the longing to preserve it prompted me with other enthusiastic friends to found the Victorian Society here in 1958. After the death of Lord Ross in 1979, the time had come to let the house share its many memories. It was sold to the Greater London Council and opened to the public by the Victorian Society. Later, the house was transferred to the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, and in the year 2000, closed for three years of restoration. The legacy of number 18 Stafford Terrace is unique. It is more than just a Victorian house, it is a family home, retaining so many of its original features and objects that it has become an invaluable resource. But the house was not Lindley's only legacy. His artistic talents were passed down through the generations. To his daughter, Maud. To his grandson, the theatre designer, Oliver Messel and to Linley's great-grandson, the photographer Lord Snowden, and his children, David and Sarah. While you're taking the tour, remember to stop, listen and imagine what number 18 Stafford Terrace has witnessed over the years. 
No doubt, if Linley and Marion were to come back today, they would turn to each other and smile, astonished to discover how much it still feels like home.